Yeah, hours of baby shark. I think that could be considered like equivalent to Chinese water torture. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Baby shark. Uh, I don't know. Fifth or sixth time around, my eyes just I can't see. Everything gets blurry. Yep. Okay, we are live on Facebook. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Okay, we still have three minutes, so we'll chatter wow. it up. What? We're like three minutes ahead of the game? We are like way ahead of this morning. Wowzers. How about that? That is awesome. So the lake, what did they do at the lake this weekend, the kids? Uh, no, just yesterday they went there and I uh, got to play in the sand and we have a little, uh, it's called Sailorville Lake. It's just a, it's probably two miles from our house and uh but they loved it and the twins haven't even been in sand before so that was interesting to see their reactions so oh that's so cool <laughs> joy was like all about it and running around and pax the boy was just like uh, like like try not wanting to sit in it and that yeah, was funny now did they want to put it in their mouths because that that was the thing that i took we took cam to the beach when he was little oh. and eating sand was a thing and I understood it when they just had the gums but like the second year he had teeth and that is like ooh. so my niece got a disease from that she got a um because some cat had you know in like in some sand oh. somewhere yeah not beach sand then well, I, if you go to like a local like park or something and it's a sandbox that could be problems oh and Dee is on with us hi Dee listen to our sand talk <laughs> she's grandchildren maybe she has some sand stories to share <laughs> kids putting sand in their mouths and doing all sorts of things in the sand oh and we got three people on facebook so far hello three people <laughs> each of you are unique and loved by god yes we're glad to have you here yep we're glad to be on early ready to go is the tape working like i taped my smile back so it's always there like i'm happy <laughs> early in the morning i'm so excited yes well i was thinking with the masks uh, i'm gonna get oh, a mask yeah. that has a smile on it because oh that's good because i have to say going out with all of the masks and every and nobody says hello i say hello i'm like the i'm the obnoxious person with the mask if you run into me in the store saying hi oh. smiling <laughs> trying to lighten the the very somber mood we I'm have sure from the midwest that's a very midwesty thing to do <laughs> nope when i got in new york and i said hi to people they're like what do you want <laughs> well i am in new jersey in the suburbs of new jersey so it's a little no. we're a little lighter out here uh, but, what are you okay. looking at huh? <laughs> okay it's nine o'clock all right. Give it a pause and then we'll uh, get going. Good morning. I'm Deacon Matt Hallback, Director of a Catechesis for William H. Sadler and a Deacon in the Diocese of Des Moines, Iowa. So glad to be with you here on Tuesday for our morning prayer series. I want to thank everyone who joins us live, uh, who takes time out of their mornings to pray with us. Thank you. God bless you. And for all those who come upon our videos, which you can find, as we'll show you here, at Sadly Religion, our Facebook page. You can also find us at Sadly Religion slash Morning Prayers. Uh, and all things faith formation, you can find at sadlyreligion.com slash online learning. So there's a lot of uh, wonderful resources for you there. And we're pulling up uh, all kinds of stuff here on the screen today. Um, so having got the housekeeping out of the way, <laughs> There we go. It's early for everybody here on this production. Uh, after getting that out of the way, um, we have a good gospel today. Of course we do, right? It's good news. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the gospels. Uh, but it's continuing the conversation between Jesus and the a leading Pharisee at the time, Nicodemus, who is converting over to believe in Jesus as the Messiah and as, uh, as the Son of God. So we'll listen to that in a moment. But again, I want to thank you for being with us, and let's put ourselves in a, in a good place mentally right now to just quiet ourselves, not think about anything, just take a moment and just breathe, uh, maybe put your hands in your lap, 
But the point is to realize that God is always with us here. And sometimes it's difficult to hear it and feel it and know it because there's so much out there that distracts us. And uh, in some cases, it makes us anxious. So we need that time to just quiet so we can listen. So we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it will, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, you are the teacher of Israel, and you don't understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you, <clears throat> we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we've seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the son of man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have a very beautiful depiction of Moses and the bronze serpent that Jesus refers to. And it uh, almost looks like it's a, a, a tapestry of some kind, but it's, it's a beautiful stained glass, I believe. And we see the serpent there, we see Moses, and, the, and we see the people of Israel. And the whole idea there, and Jesus refers to this, is that in that scripture from Exodus with Moses and the serpent, uh, the people of Israel were saved as long as they continued to look on the serpent. But when they didn't, uh, then they were uh, afflicted and they were, um, they were made sick. And it was the lesson being when we take our eyes off of the gifts of God, in this case, we take our eyes off of Jesus, the greatest gift uh, of God, then we are open ourselves up to all sorts of potential harm and potential affliction and and to put it in psychological terms negativity uh and that's what jesus is referring to today uh he's referring to the fact that he, he needs to die that's part of his mission so this reading takes us back before easter okay this is jesus who has not been raised from the dead uh this comes from the early part of john's gospel for the daily reading but he's telling nicodemus like that serpent that Moses had, I am that person that everyone should <clears throat> keep their minds and hearts fixed, fixed on. And I will be raised up like that serpent was so everyone can see me. And those who keep their eyes on me will live no matter what happens. Not even death will destroy them. They will rise from that as well. Jesus is, is the greatest gift, um, but we have to keep our eyes on him, right? We have to pay attention to him. That's the hardest part. We all know this, maybe we don't articulate it, but it's the hardest part about religion. It's the hardest part about being Catholic or, or whatever faith you might be, um, to have your eyes always on God. And that, that takes effort, right? That takes the choices that we make each day. Are we gonna pray today? Well, I don't feel like it. Well, then we don't pray. And then we, don't we take our eyes off God. And there's another beautiful verse that comes to mind in the gospels where Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. Uh, these, the story we heard today and that verse just go hand in hand because when you put God first in your life, everything else kind of gets ordered. You don't have to worry about all the details. All you need to do is focus on Jesus. One other gospel passage that's really fits nicely into this is the gospel where Jesus shows up in Lazarus's house and you remember uh, Martha's running around cleaning and trying to get everything ready for supper. And Mary is sitting there listening to Jesus and paying attention to Jesus. And Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better part and it won't be taken from her. Mary had her eyes on Jesus and knew that Jesus was the one to pay attention to. Uh, all these gospel passages are saying the same thing. No matter what happens in life, no matter how stormy things get, no matter how angry we get or how worried we get or how awful things get around us, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, uh, we will get through anything. It's also, this makes me think too, it's important. And we mentioned this in our quick tip series, which is available on Sadly Religion. 
uh, in our free free resources, but it's a series of videos. Uh, one of those is about kind of making your house into a more prayerful space. It's so important to have religious iconography around you or crosses, crucifixes, rosaries, holy water, whatever it is. But those little things that remind you to put your eyes on Jesus. So I hope uh, that'll be our prayer for today and our challenge for today. Uh, help us keep our eyes on you, Lord. And when we start to take them away and start navel gazing, as I call it, uh, help lift up our chin and get back to you who... Uh, is the source of all goodness, life, and happiness. So now we get to that part of our show uh, where we send in some live petitions. We use the chat box. If you've not been with us before on our Zoom meeting, you can use the chat box there. And there's a little bit of a lag, so then I usually blah, 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 and, and fill in the space. Um, but I ha have more than blah, blah right now. I'd like to just pray in a very special way uh, for my sister-in-law, Teresa. She just had triplets. Uh, that's right, triplets, and uh, I think this is kids, I think she has eight children now, it's incredible, but she had complications afterwards, and uh, the, two, of the, two of the kids are in the NICU, and she's in, uh, had to go back in because she had, and I've never heard of this, uh, she had post, um, you know, after birth, preeclampsia, now, preeclampsia is something you usually have before you give birth, and it and it's, uh, really uh, puts pressure on the heart and your blood pressure just skyrockets. She was having that after having given birth. So she had to go into that ER. She had to get on, on blood pressure medication and all those things. So can't imagine. And this is just one week into these little babies' lives, two girls and a boy. Um, so we pray for her and her family and, and for peace and that they all keep their eyes on Jesus. My goodness. Uh, what a difficult time. So if you have a, a prayer petition, please post it in the chat box. And uh, after that, we'll look at our virtual prayer wall and pray for all those people that uh, are asking for us to pray. For my grandma, who is alone, and others in the same situation to find God, peace, and love. Amen to that. Anytime that we can connect uh, with our family members and especially those that live alone. Uh, my mom follows these. Uh, she doesn't come on live, but she follows the videos or watches the videos. She's not very tech savvy. <laughs> so uh, it's funny. So we've worked it out to where she can be on with my brother and I and see us, but she can't get her camera to work so that we can see her. So that's how we we do our video chats. <laughs> I want to pray for a good friend's daughter with young children who's hospitalized with COVID-19. Definitely. We'll pray for them. I want to pray since thinking about Teresa and her triplets, I want to pray for all new moms and all those about to give birth and just the difficulties and the fears that surround a normal uh, birth, but now with the fear of COVID and, and being alone in the hospital and um, spouses can't be around, family can't be around, uh, just for extra courage. For those who are struggling to afford food and the basics, may people share what they have and may they find what they need. It's a beautiful prayer, thank you. So we'll move now to our virtual prayer wall.
Lord, we trust that you will answer these prayers because you are good and you are so faithful. And we ask this in your name. Amen. I was kind of smiling during those petitions because in the background we have kids bot playing on our Amazon Prime and we have a bunch of twins jumping around so that was an interesting soundtrack for our prayer time. Uh, anyway, it's so good to be with you. You can always find everything to do with this uh, program at sadlyreligion.com slash morning prayers and I'd like to end with a final blessing. So the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.